and welcome to a special episode of Ideas for Change. We've got a guest who's, of course, been talking a lot about innovation, but we actually draw out his ideas on change, what change we're looking for, why, how, and what. Thanks very much, C.K. Pralat, for joining in. Just to introduce to our viewers, you are the Distinguished University Professor at University of Michigan Ross School of Business, USA, which really means, I should ask you, what do you think about India's sudden need for ideas for change and the heightened awareness that it must happen now. First, uh, thank you for having me here. I feel that the current crisis provides India an enormous opportunity for a step change. Just to recall, in 91, 92, we had a crisis. That crisis allowed us to fundamentally change the country. So you could argue India was independent from 1947, but it really got its economic freedom to grow and change around 92, 93. And in 15 years, we have made extraordinary progress. So the question is whether we look at the current crisis, financial crisis that are affecting the world, as our opportunity to get a quantum change in the way we innovate, in the way we run our government, in the way we uh, create new opportunities for our people. Mm -hmm. So this requires new ideas. Just like we had new ideas there under compulsion, now we can have new ideas. And therefore, the timing is very right. Uh, and we can move forward rapidly. Sure. They like to say about India, you know, it's the vibrant economy, the economy of tomorrow, the leader in you know, economic activity, talent, people, all of that. But some would say we've come a long way since independence, but we have a much longer way ahead. And perhaps the next milestone, so to speak, psychologically, will be 75 years of Indian independence. How do you perceive India's current achievements, and what, what more lies ahead? Yeah. I think uh, when uh, I was asked to speak at India at 60, I decided to speak of India at 75. Mm -hmm. uh, the past is known. We can celebrate and we should, but the future is where the hope and the aspirations ought to be. So India 75 to me provides a way of thinking about a different India where you can have 200 million college graduates, 500 million trained professional people, which makes India the knowledge hub of the world. We have a huge demographic advantage. Young people, and therefore, if we can train them, they can be in every part of the world as people who are providing technical support, knowledge base, and skills. But some would say the potential is very different from what actually might happen That's in right. reality. In fact, a lot of time, people extrapolate the past. Mm -hmm. But good strategy is folding the future in. We have to imagine this future and ask the question, what do we do? in order to create that future. Right. So I start by saying, is it desirable to have opportunities for every child to be a professionally trained person? That is a desirable goal. Now we have to ask the question, how do we get from where we are to where we need to be? And how we really imagine it. Like Einstein said, knowledge is in the past. Imagination is what is That's going right. to shape the future. When one talks of shaping India's future, the question is, you know, we've had a little bit of a shake-up, and these events of ideas come in at a time when there's a lot being talked about in the backdrop of the Mumbai terror attacks because the, the movement sort of got more momentum then. People were physically on the road saying, we need change. What kind of changes are we talking about? I think if you uh, let me get back to India 75 because that informs this discussion. India 75 is based on three platforms. One is education is a critical ingredient for creating upward mobility for people, globalizing our skill base, exploiting global opportunities. Mm 